guys, this is Max from HighOnAndroid.com. Today we're going to do a full review of the Pixel 4a. I tell you right now, this is the best budget smartphone of 2020. <laughs> Let's go do this, baby. So the Pixel 4a is the biggest smartphone in the smallest form factor. It's almost like the city of Reno. Uh, let me go ahead and show you alongside with my <laughs> V60. And you can see how small it is versus my OnePlus 8 Pro. The Pixel 4a features a 5.67 inch screen with 2340 by 1080 pixels with 3140 milliamp hour battery. For performance, the Pixel 4a features a Snapdragon 730G. Raw performance is somewhere between a Galaxy S8 and a S9. The highly optimized 4A from Google, maker of Android operating system, runs rather faster. Actually, most of the apps I run, it feels actually a lot faster. I've actually had zero lag. For example, like my OnePlus 8 Pro, the browser will freeze on me. It's one of the bugs on this phone, which I'll have a review of soon too. Subscribe for that. So even though it's got a crappy processor, basically, but it's been optimized so well, I get better battery life, maybe double the one of OnePlus 8 Pro. I think this is the worst. LG V60 is pretty decent, but this tiny phone will still beat it. I was just really amazed that this phone with a slower processor has no lag and gets longer battery life. And what I really like about this phone, the back fingerprint is finally back, guys. It is so much easier to pull it out of the pocket and by the time I'm looking at the screen, it's already unlocked. I have no idea why companies decided to do in-display fingerprint sensor because it just makes it, it makes your screen dirty every time you touch it. Look, look at how dirty my OnePlus 8 Pro is. It's just full of fingerprints. And look at how clean my Pixel 4a is. Just having the rear fingerprint sensor is common sense. It's faster. It's cheaper to make the phone. I love it. All right, so, uh, another thing, I, I love big phones. These days, I'm usually on my LG V60 because I love the large screen. This is my personal computer basically now. But there are times when I wanna use uh, the phone one-handed. For example, I wanna use the phone one-handed. And this absolutely, you can use the phone one-handed more than something like an LG V60. It's not the best form factor. I mean, I was reading a review, I think on CNET or something, I, I don't know, some website, and they're like, everything looks good with Pixel 4a, but the back of the phone <laughs> is not pretty. I'm like, okay, so do you use your phone like this? Or do you use your phone like this? Do you use your phone to show off the back? I mean, I'm just not that kind of person, so I don't really care. I just want my phone to work. It's not something I'm trying to show off to people. So I like that they focus on design. This is only $350 US dollars, dollars. I was actually rooting for Google to bring this back, the low budget phones. Remember with like Galaxy Nexus, Nexus 4, uh, when Google started making their Nexus phones a long time ago, um, they were very, very cheap. They were like half the price of flagship phones. And they're doing the same thing. Now, I love that Google is going back to that and they don't have a crappy phone. This is like same price as a cheap Chinese phone, but it runs way faster with the slower processor uh, with long battery life. If you want to buy an Android phone and you want to just make it work, you have to buy the Google phone because they make Android operating system for those who didn't know. All right, another thing I was really surprised out of this little phone, the stereo sound is just awesome. You have stereo speakers and they're actually decently loud. Let me go ahead and demonstrate. I mean, a very nice balance sound out of a $350 phone. That's amazing. And there is 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is great. You don't have to buy some expensive Bluetooth headphones. You don't have to recharge your headphones. You just plug it in and boom. Now let's talk about the camera. The Pixel 4a has only one back camera. All right, a lot of flagships uh, like my LG V60, uh, OnePlus 8 Pro, they all come with Three cameras, wide angle, zoom, and standard. Now, you don't actually get a lot of good photos out of zoom or wide angle, especially in low light. It becomes actually useless in low light, and you, I revert back to the main camera in low light situations indoors. So if you don't care about all that, but you care about very excellent photos, which this one has, it has the same camera sensor 
as the Pixel 4. Uh, it has same camera software processing, excellent portrait shots. I mean, that's what's important with this phone. The only thing lacking on this phone, I would say is the 4K recording. I would say it's, it's a little bit behind. The only reason Google is able to get away with photos is because they're software processing. But let me go ahead and take a quick 4K video here to demonstrate. So here is a 4K video. Um, I feel like it's a little lacking, you know, because I love taking videos and I feel like the quality is just not near like my LG uh, V60 or the OnePlus 8 Pro. All right, but it's decent. Uh, if you're not taking a ton of videos like myself, this could be not a big deal. But my only complaint is videos just don't come out with quality uh, on this phone. But if you care about photos more, this will take some excellent photos. It'll be to all of Samsung, LG phones out there. Now I'm using Google Fi, which is excellent for spam blocking. It's got personal assistant uh, that answers your calls. So it blocks like 99% of my spam calls. Also with Google Fi, with my daughter's extra line, I only pay like $30 a month for one gig of data because I'm always on Wi-Fi. I already have unlimited on Verizon and T-Mobile. So there's absolutely no reason for me to actually use data. Eventually, I'm gonna probably move everything to Google Fi. To use Google Fi, it comes with eSIM. The greatest thing with Pixel phones and Google Fi is that when you switch phones, you don't have to change out the SIM card. It's built in, it's an eSIM. You just sign into your Google account with Wi-Fi and you can move your numbers to another Pixel phone anytime you want. Or you can use the Google SIM and put it on any other non-Google phone and also move it that way too. I just really love how Google made it so simple to move your line. You just sign into your Google account and boom, you don't have to worry about SIM cards. Uh, I have multiple phones, so this becomes very useful. Sometimes I'll switch numbers several times a day and I save so much time not having to take out that SIM card or losing it somewhere. I just sign into the new phone and boom shakalaka. It's one of these hidden features of Google Fi that's built into the Pixel 4a. You can also use SIM cards, so it's actually, you can actually use it almost like a dual SIM. If you have like a Verizon in there and you have the Google Fi eSIM, then you can go ahead and switch between the two lines. If you go overseas and you need to buy data, prepaid data, then you can also easily do that with this phone. And all Pixel phones support all four carriers in the US, AT&T, T-Mobile, Sprint, Verizon. That's another plus, it's an all carrier phone. Now, I had a friend who actually uh, was living in Indonesia for almost a year and I had a video on that. And last time he was here, he canceled his service and went back. But I told him he could have just paused his service. So Google used to offer an uh, indefinite pause where you could pause your service right from the app if you go overseas and not have to pay, but keep your number. So recently he was gonna, we went to T-Mobile store and we're looking at $70, $80 per month plans for unlimited, which is the standard now for like Verizon, AT&T, all the top carriers. But if you don't use a lot of uh, data, like if you're on Wi-Fi most of the time, because I know most of you are you know, at home working or at office working. Now, because of COVID-19, I know a lot of you are actually working from home. You never need to use your data. If that's the case, you'll save so much more. You'll save more than 50% by switching to Google Fi. So I highly recommend it. Uh, another good thing is if you get Google Fi and you use Hangout, then you can receive your calls and texts on your PC. So that way when you're on your computer, um, you can access your Hangouts and receive your SMS messages, especially if you're doing banking on, or something and you're doing SMS, then you can copy and paste from your Hangouts app instead of looking at your phone, turning your phone on, you know, and typing that in. So Google has really thought a lot into their whole ecosystem. And I know a lot of you guys like Apple stuff and talk about or oh, airdrop and all this crap. <laughs> Seriously, like if you use Google, there's other benefits you get. And I'm telling you right now, you should switch to Google Fi, excellent coverage. They use basically all of T-Mobile's and all of Sprint's uh, coverage. And the, with the new 5G, you'll get service pretty much everywhere in the US. Anyway, if you guys wanna sign up and save 20 bucks, use my referral rank. Definitely this is a way to save money. 30 bucks for one gig of data and unlimited calls, unlimited text. Why the hell are you paying more than that, you know? And if you do go over, if you do use more than 10 gigs per month, it's free after that too. So maybe one month you might have like a bill for like over a hundred bucks, but that's it. You know, other months you don't use a lot of data, then you'll be fine. Also international calls are free. 
international, 3G data is free. So whenever I go to Thailand, Korea, it's all free. The international data is actually faster on the Google Fi phones than T-Mobile. Even though they use the same service, I don't know why, but Google gives you like HSPA speeds. So that's basically like five to 10 megabits per second download while T-Mobile gives you edge speeds, like less than one megabits per second download. Anyway, this is a really good phone. I really, really love it. So I wanna go somewhere super light. Sometimes, you know, I carry too many phones. Literally, my pants start dropping and I have to keep pulling out my pants. Uh, it's not my belt. It's just, I carry a lot of phones and sometimes there are times like when I'm skateboarding or something, I wanna carry a small phone. Then I'll go with this. And these days, phones don't get much better every year. They get slightly better. And you're spending $1,000 a year? Oh, screw that. Just get this. It can be your gateway phone. If you wanna wait a year, <laughs> if you wanna wait, wait a year for the next big thing, you know, it, it's like your, let's say you dropped your phone and you really don't wanna buy a new $1,000 phone. Then you can get this. That's another way to look at it. But, um, but I think Google has really made the best budget phone, not getting greedy like Samsung and charging $1,500 for a phone or $2,000 or $3,000 for a foldable phone. Are you serious? Who the hell's gonna buy that? This is a phone that's made for everybody, for your kids, for your 10 year old daughter, for your college student, for professionals, uh, people who just don't need all that shebang. Maybe you don't even use a smartphone that much, but you want a very good phone with very long battery life. And that's still faster than most flagships. And to me, due to Google's optimization, the Pixel 4a, I swear, is way faster <laughs> than most of the flagships. It's actually faster than my V60, not on benchmarks, but when you like switch between apps, uh, let's say I'm on Google Sheets, uh, I'm uploading a video, uh, blah, blah, blah. It just feels faster. I think it is faster. I mean, Google should start taking over the Android world. And they really are. This is just gonna be the start. And I can't wait till the Pixel 5 comes out. This is definitely a go. Other than the 4K video, uh, excellent front back photo camera. All right, very, very fast, no lag, long battery life. This is not a powerhouse, but this is like the biggest smartphone in the smallest form factor right now. Hey guys, thanks for watching my review. Hit the thumbs up. I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a great day. Ha, ha, ha.